welcome to the ChatGPT podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Every day I break down breaking AI news and I talk about how it applies to business, startups, and our daily lives. Are you interested in getting your AI business or product in front of thousands of tech professionals, investors, engineers, and managers every single day? We're now opening up podcast sponsorships. If you're interested in sponsoring the podcast to have your business featured, you can reach out to me for more information at jaden at fiund.com. I'll leave that email in the description. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app, or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. Since the beginning of the AI revolution, a very big area that has been in the crosshairs of AI is journalists, journalism, and publishers. Of course, we know that um, AI is incredibly powerful when it comes to writing articles. So today on the podcast, I want to talk about one of the biggest um, journalistic sources, one of the biggest publishers that is partnering with OpenAI, um, and I'm going to talk about how I believe that is going to impact um, the overall segment of news, that overall market segment. And the first thing I want to bring up is the fact that just not too long ago, there's a big controversy with CNET because CNET, um, it was discovered that they were using AI, probably ChatGPT or you know DaVinci or whatever, um, to help them write articles. And they actually had an entire section on CNET where they you know, eventually they, it was found out that there was like a specific journalist name and I can't remember what it was. It was something like CNET staff or something. So if it didn't have a specific person's name, um, then that meant that it was written by AI. And they were using this to actually write a whole bunch of articles to essentially beef up their um, their website to write a bunch of, you know, extra articles, extra fast. They had this, you know, CNET staff, aka ChatGPT, that was just, you know, spinning out a ton of articles. It probably had someone going and deciding what the headlines were or maybe what the most popular searches they were trying to capture. But in any case... CNET did this. It was a big, huge controversy when people found out because there was an article that was talking about compound interest and the way that ChatGPT had calculated the compound interest in the article wasn't correct. Now, most of the information it was sharing about compound interest was correct. You know, the rest of the articles that, uh, that were published were like fairly solid, but, you know, there had been some calculations that were missed. And of course, we know that this is one of the earliest weaknesses of ChatGPT and OpenAI was in, you know, calculations and all that kind of that aspect of things. And so this is no surprise. But this kind of kicked off this whole fear of journalists once they realized that, you know, CNET was starting to replace people. There was a bunch of different news companies that were firing people. We know that Vice, I think, recently declared bankruptcy. Um, BuzzFeed, I, I'm not sure if BuzzFeed declared bankruptcy or they're having some severe um, money problems. And BuzzFeed also has announced recently that they are going to be, um, oh yeah, it's BuzzFeed News. BuzzFeed News declared bankruptcy as well. But I don't know if the whole parent company did. In any case, they said something about restructuring. In any case, BuzzFeed is also using AI to help them write. So there was this whole controversy. Journalists were saying, you know, uh, AI needs to be banned from the newsroom. Um, some people are saying AI is going to replace the newsroom. There's this whole thing. And I think this is really important because just uh, just recently, yesterday, OpenAI announced that they are going to be partnering with the Associated Press, which is kind of, you know, the OG. It's one of the most reputable um press companies everyone essentially when the associated press publishes something everyone usually covers it um, but the associated press is going to be partnering with open ai and allowing open ai to train its future and current ai models off of all of the articles on the associated press this is really interesting i think we're seeing a lot more of these kind of open ai partnering with a specific company to grab their data and this is cool because i think i mean cool i think this is a smart move by open ai because essentially they're saying hey we'll let you you know see the inside scoop we're going to give you some tips on you know technology and whatnot and in exchange you are going to be allowing us uh to scrape and train off of all of your articles and all of your in the ap's archive as far back as 1985 so as part of the agreement ap is going to uh, gain access to opening eyes quote unquote technology and product expertise so we're not exactly sure what that means per se although i'm sure they have some sort of uh partnership that they're working on but I think that AP has been exploring the use of AI features for quite a long time, according to them. Um, I think that 
you know, AI features and, and this whole thing kind of began generating reports about company earnings back in 2014. So, you know, obviously they've been using AI to do a lot of different things even since back then. And I think it later leveraged uh, AI to kind of automate stories about minor league baseball and college sports, right? Perhaps something they didn't have the manpower to have a journalist writing every single, you know, story about college sports or minor league baseball. So they actually had AI helping them on that. I think that uh, I think AP is joining AI's really fast growing list of partners. They have a lot of people that are working with them right now. Um, on Tuesday, uh, OpenAI actually announced a six year deal with Shutterstock that's going to allow OpenAI to license images. I think this is on the back of a lot of AI models getting sued by Getty Images and others because they trained them on images they didn't have rights to. So I think now they're, you know, going and OpenAI is getting uh, building deals with Shutterstock and others to essentially allow them to license images, videos, music, and metadata, which I think is something a lot of people aren't thinking about. But metadata gives you a lot of extra information about different pieces of content. And they're using that to train their text to image model um, and Dolly. So BuzzFeed said that it's going to be using these AI tools as well provided by OpenAI to quote unquote enhance and personalize its content. Um, and OpenAI is also working with Microsoft on a number of different things in this space. But Greg Brockman recently tweeted, he said, announcing partnership with AP will help them thoughtfully explore use cases for our technology, will work with their content in our systems. And Associated Press tweeted, AP OpenAI agree to share select news content and technology in new collaboration. Now, the thing is, Associated Press isn't really saying what exactly they're doing uh, with all of this, <laughs> with, uh, with their partnership with OpenAI, but inevitably... Like, we know where this is going. OpenAI is helping them to, like, replace journalists, you could say, but essentially automate news publishing. They're, right? Like, as we've seen, there's a lot of different aspects of the news, minor league baseball and other things, college, you know, sports, that uh, we might not have the manpower. They might not have the manpower to cover everything. And so they're going to use AI to do it. I think that AI is going to start bleeding in, similar to Cena, into actually more mainstream articles. If something drops, um, would they rather... Like, here's the thing. If a news story drops and they can have a chat GPT push a button and instantly publish it the second after some breaking news happens, I think that's going to be very appealing in the news industry. Speed is going to be of the essence. And these AIs, in my opinion, are going to churn out stuff really crazy. And now imagine a future where perhaps every journalist at the Associated Press has an AI trained off of them and their style. All they have to do is say, write a news story about X, Y, and Z facts and the implications about X, Y, and Z. You can feed the information and bullet points in in about 10 seconds, and then this thing will generate the whole article. You proofread it, say, yep, that sounds like me. You go and like hit up a few people, request for comment. Uh, you can publish the story immediately after the event happens, and then as the requests for comment roll in and people are commenting on it, you can start feeding them in and bulk up the story a little bit You know, post-launch. There's a lot of things you could do leveraging AI and news to really work on being the fastest um, with a story. And oftentimes the first person to break the story is the winner. So I think that's really, really, uh, really, really critical. Here's a quote from Brad Lightcap, which is OpenAI's chief operating officer. He said this recently in a statement. He said, the AP continues to be an industry leader in the use of AI. Their feedback, along with the access to their high quality factual text archive, will help to improve the capabilities and usefulness of OpenAI's systems. So I think earlier this year, AP announced a bunch of AI-powered projects that um, will essentially publish Spanish language news alerts and document public safety incidents in a Minnesota newspaper, right? So they have like these kind of two random news ca uh, use cases, it's Minnesota newspaper, uh, newspaper, and then also Spanish language news alerts. Um, and then the outlet also launched an AI search tool that's supposed to make it easier for news partners to find photos and videos in its libraries based on descriptive language. So they have this massive library of data and content. Um, a lot of times if you look at uh, news articles and they have like an image embedded in them, oftentimes the source will be Associated Press because the Associated Press will have gotten a picture that's relevant for them. And so that AI tool is going to help uh, different news companies use that. I'm assuming they pay a licensing fee for that. What's interesting is the fact that it's like they're, they're, t they're documenting public safety incidents in a Minnesota newspaper. It sounds so obscure and small, but inevitably, you know, this is going to be public safety incidences in all newspapers, like those kind of things that are really standard cut and dry, they'll be able to uh, do as well as Spanish language news alerts. Um, it sounds like they're testing this, the whole system in a whole country or a whole region or area, a whole language. So that is potential that, you know, if it works great in Spain and Mexico and Spanish speaking places, they can roll that out to English speaking places as well. 
Um, I think that the AP's partnership with OpenAI seems like a really natural next step in a lot of these AI moves they've been making. But I think there's still a lot of really important details that are missing about how they're going to use it. So I think that the AP says um, it does, quote unquote, does not use it in its news stories, which maybe they don't now, maybe they will in the future. Here's the thing, like if you had a an AI trained off of you specifically and you put in the news stories and it published and it just like wrote the thing and then you go and like proofread it and make sure it sounds good and you're doing that to be the fastest person. In my opinion, that sounds like a perfect use case. I think they pride themselves on being like, no, but like no AI could ever write. But like, I mean, like realistically, yes, the AI could be trained off of any of your journalists and could write just like them and it could do a great job. The journalist could then review it and take a tenth of the time. I think journalis journalists intrinsically feel gross about that like concept, but I think that's where it's going to get. And if the Associated Press doesn't do it, other journals will. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out in the future. Obviously, people don't like the feeling of, oh, man, this was written by AI or AI writ wrote this, whatever. But I think people are going to have to get over that bias eventually because if it's the cheapest thing and the fastest thing, inevitably, when the quality gets up to the same or better than a human, it's just going to win in the end. So it'll be interesting to follow this and see where this goes at the end of the day. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. If you've been following the podcast for a while, you'll know that over the last six months, I've been working on a stealth AI startup. Of the hundreds of projects I've covered, this is the one that I believe has the greatest potential. So today I'm excited to announce AIbox. AIbox is a no-code AI app building platform paired with the App Store for AI that lets you monetize your AI tools. The platform lets you build apps by linking together AI models like ChatGPT, MidJourney, and Eleven Labs eventually we'll integrate with software like Gmail, Trello, and Salesforce, so you can use AI to automate every function in your organization. To get notified when we launch and be one of the first to build on the platform, you can join the waitlist at AIbox.ai. The link is in the show notes. We are currently raising a seed round of funding. If you're an investor that is focused on disruptive tech, I'd love to tell you more about the platform. You can reach out to me at jaden at AIbox.ai. I'll leave that email in the show notes. You've been listening to the ChatGPT podcast. Make sure to rate us wherever you listen to your podcasts and have a fantastic week.